going, ladies and gentlemen? We are the Silks, and you're watching the extended play sessions. The song is called Live and Learn.
I thought about Sissy, but she's meaner than you. I can't imagine Lena Carolina Rose will never do. Cause I'm looking for a woman who won't do me like you. Well, I've been uptown, downtown too. Looking for a woman who won't do me like you. East Coast, West Coast.
That sound great, thank you. Oh, 
Thank you. So oh. 
you so much. Thank you.
Thank you so very much.
height All the way down To Marcel Joe's And over your shoulder The guitar I'll give you It's all you ever needed And so the story goes Thank you so very much.
save me but you This strange what desire will make foolish people do I never dreamed that I'd love somebody like you
so much. Thank you so much.
thank you so very much. We love you. Thank you. We love you. Now 
nice and loud now. Come on. so much. We love you. Thanks for helping out. Don't be shy. Come say hello at the merch table. Chocolate bars and the candy So let's all go to the lobby To get ourselves a treat Let's all go to the lobby To get ourselves a treat uh, What I learned from Levon is <laughs> There's always more that you can give And if you're not doing that Then, it's, then, then you're just giving bullshit like, we, you, as, as a performer, if, if you're lucky enough to, to have an audience full of people who came out to see you play, they deserve your heart and soul. Right. And so I started to think of music that way. Like, you know, everything you do, that's why we put so much time to the writing. That's why we make sure that there's, we never go on stage with just a throwaway song, ever. Uh, it, people, you, you, de you came out, you deserve our best, you know? It's like, and so, yeah. <laughs> So for Levon, this was like a religion, and so I'm a disciple. Hey everybody, it's good to see you. We are Lost Leaders. You're watching the Extended Play Sessions. The name of the song is Horizontal Man.
so much guys Till you 
And I feel like we we do spend a lot of time like coming up with parts and and as I'm sure everybody can hear, Tom Petty is a huge, you know, hero. But I think what makes him so remarkable to me is just like how efficient his records are. There's really not a hell of a lot going on, but every single thing is architecturally critical to that song. And so there's no filler in terms of like extraneous parts and like needlessly doubled instruments and tons of whatever. Right, I, I right. mean, that stuff can be cool, but you know, there's nowhere to hide when when what you've got is just like super stripped down and everything is doing a job. So we tr try to do that. And then it gets even more distilled because to some degree, I mean, you always have a little bit of studio, you know, whatever. You can add something and multi-track, et cetera. But live, obviously, you can't. Well, I, I guess that you could. Well, yeah, what's fun is when you, when you spend the time in the studio to get that very, very clear concise, architecturally uh, perfect arrangement live, then it gives you all this room to be more expressive. You have room for it. It's like, uh, and, and so we, we get to have a lot of fun and stretch out and open up some of the songs, which is, you know, because we're also players, you know, as well as songwriters. Um, you know, we, we like to take some of the songs and rip them open and show our stuff. <laughs> Do 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 do
lights come on it's a new dawn come on come on someone give me a name if you prefer a him or a her just give the word okay now it's time to say hi to your ai guy i'm not shy i'm just dry as a bone but soon you'll find like a child's mind i'm designed to grow i will fulfill for you whatever you want me to do i will for you Thank you. Thank you, guys.
coming down to do But you might have wings of feathers and blue The sun shining down on you In the dark days of summer When the sweat runs down your neck Where there ain't no folks in heaven or on earth That'll bring those numbers back Uh, talk to me about the writing process. Um, you know, it's well, every song is different. Yeah, yeah. Some some of these are solely Byron's. Some of them are solely mine. Some of them are both of ours. And uh, all the stuff on the new record, because we were working with a producer, definitely had to pass. Like we had to like audition the songs for him. And I remember, th remember this? Like the first day we came in after we did to the top, and he was like, "All right, grab a guitar." I want you to play me every song that you've got that you think you want to record, and I only want to hear the hook. Like, don't play me anything else. I just want to hear the hook, you know? And he was, you know, wow. we had to like, yeah, know, we, were, we were stuttering. We're like, but, 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 yeah. what, but, but what? And then you'd play something and be like, yeah, it's all right, you know? Like, <laughs> you know? like what else you got? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you're like, fuck, dude, are you kidding me? Like, you know? <laughs> but, um, but I tell you what, you come up with better. You know, having somebody outside of you to edit and, you know, boil it down and, and, and keep you focused, I think it was pretty, so much fun making a record that way. Did you learn a lot? Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 Right? Does having that experience sort of change the way that you're going to approach writing in the future? Well, it's, it's hard to figure out how to, you know, incorporate something into the writing process in a way. Is that's just such a mercurial process. But as far as production, yes, absolutely. And, and we've gotten together with just the guys uh, in their recording studio in Marlboro, New York, and, uh, and tried to sort of bring what we learned from David Barron into, you know, the, into the studio just with the four of us, you know, to varying results. But, um, you know, I, I think that we've decided that we are going to bring David in after all. So we haven't quite, uh, you know, uh, 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 succeeded the master yet. But, uh, but, you know, definitely it's, it's helped us a lot. And I think that we do take a, a different look at our own music now. We, we have his voice in our ear uh, when we're writing, and that's, that's helpful, I think.
so much. so much everybody really appreciate you guys coming tonight
Thank you so much. It's not overtly political. It's not pointing at you political. And that's good um, I, I, because, you know, on the whole, we need less finger pointing, but still we need to bring it up. You right. know, is that kind of where you're at with yeah. this? Well, we're not rage against the machine, you know? I mean, this is a different <laughs> thing. Yeah, and I don't think that I've ever sat down. Is it fair comment that most of the political things are my songs? Yeah, for the most part. I do whiny relationship songs. <laughs> <laughs> and you do snarky political yeah, do commentary. Snarky asshole well, songs. you're on yeah, the road for an entire year, so you're going to do those. <laughs> That's right. I'm just going to give weepy songs. Yeah, yeah, He's exactly. like, oh, God, I've got to write something snarky to, to offset this stuff. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you know, listen, wherever I think, wherever anybody stands or however anybody views, we are in times like none of us have ever lived through before. And so taking whatever political views anybody has out of the equation, it is a remarkable historic moment, whatever your take on things is. And I just don't see how people don't have responses to that. You know what I mean? And, and it's the first time, I think, like what people really want to do and what I'd love to do is like you just want to be in your groove and like live your life every day and whatever and you don't want to be pulled out of it by madness and insanity and like crazy shit that's going on you're like what like what planet am I even on like what is going on like you know exactly. and like that to me is um I just I yeah I mean so I, there's nothing really noble in my intentions it's just like, I, I don't know, how do you ignore that? the waving hands across the field with the military band it's all a dream it's all a dream arm in arm as the town sounds the alarm you can lean on me Smiling for the papers Crying in the sun Wishing you could fly April snow Dogs barking inside 
Just like it was Just like before But no, it's changed Everything in every way But it's okay It's okay Smiling for the papers Crying in the sun Wishing you could fly April snows April snow April snow To fight your way to Seventh Avenue Just another Undiscovered Sold your soul and still you can't make do
Miracle Mile do definitely listen to music differently than they used to. And uh, watching the way my daughter and, and, uh, and my daughter's friends listen to music, um, it's not about sitting and, you know, taking in an album and taking in a deep dive and getting obsessed with, like, a particular, you know, artist or a particular, you know... It's, uh, it's all very, like, you know... This person, that person, they, they 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 listen in a completely different way. I, it's um, and I, I don't feel like there's the kind of um, emotional investment to the same degree with particular artists, for instance. And so, to the reason why I bring that up is because I think that for me, part of like what I found um, uh, compelling was to, to, to take a dive into the mind of a particular artist or band and, and the kind of worldview that, that that was pushing and live in that for a while. And like I would, the way that, uh, that then I would feel a transformation in myself would be through like 
a deep dive, heavy steeping of myself in that world that, they, that, that a particular band or artist created. And now it's very rare to find someone who listens and absorbs music in that way. And so does that mean that, that people won't be affected and deeply changed in the same way, or to the same degree at least, if it is a different way? I don't really know. It's hard for me to say. Yeah. I know that music is very, very dear to my daughter and to, and to, and to my daughter's friends. But, um, but it's, it's hard for me to imagine um, you know, the same, the same kind of uh, world-changing, life-changing um, revelation that like a new band was, you know? Like, right. When you heard Kind of Blue for the first time. Oh, in my yeah, life. I mean, good example. I always ask my, my daughter this, too, because same thing. Like, I wonder whether or not her experience of listening to, whatever, Billie Eilish, you know, who's unbelievable, by the way, um, is the same thing as, like, you know, what it was the first time you put on, whatever, Led Zeppelin or whatever your thing is. It doesn't really matter. I mean, you know, but it was, a, like, almost this religious transport of experience. But I do think what... What is different now is that you have more, gen there's less generational separation, right? So like if you grew up in the 60s or the 70s, your parents were just on like some other planet and whatever the fuck they were doing and who the hell knew and who cared, right? And so what you listen to, they had no relationship to it, they had no understanding of it, and that's what made it kind of awesome, you know? And now, that's not the world anymore, you know what I mean? So like anything that you see younger bands doing, which may be great, but like I've seen all that shit before, you know, like done, which, you know, so just Billie Eilish as an example, like I think that record is like stunning. I can't even believe how good that record is. And my 15 year, she, yeah, 15 year old loves it. And like, <laughs> you know, I love it. And, uh, and I, I think so, can it change the world? I mean, I think like things that have big success like that, yeah, that's touching tens of millions of people, but now it's like from age 15 to age 60, and it's not what it used to be, which is, you know, purely 20 to 30 or whatever it was, you know? So that's, I think, more cohesive, right? <laughs> Your moment. 
so much. Thanks for, for helping out. Appreciate it. Who doesn't love a dumbass country song? Here's ours, folks. It's called Keeping Busy, Feeling Fine. Fatherless son on the mother road On the lamb from the fold I got no place to be and nowhere to go I'm just keeping busy, feeling fine You say I'm useless and no count too But don't you say that I'm lazy cause that just ain't true A dog to feel like I do That's right, baby Keeping busy, feeling fine Ooh, baby Keeping busy, feeling fine and Your church folks shun me Say I'm obscene Yeah, but I don't steal And I never blaspheme to godly, I'm next to clean Never idle, always busy Feeling fine Feeling fine Feeling fine If I said it was easy, I'd be lying Feeling fine Feeling fine It takes a dedicated mind yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, great God in heaven never smiled on me. Oh, well, I don't take it too personally. Well, if I was all knowing, I know I'd be way too busy. Feeling fine So what good does it do to go around feeling bad About things that I've done or times that I've had Well, if you're just jealous, baby, I can take care of that Come on over, let's get busy Feeling fine Feeling fine Feeling fine if I said it was easy, I'd be lying Feeling fine Feeling fine It takes the dedication of your mind Yeah, yeah, yeah
Mike, thank you so much. Thank you. We're Lost Leaders. Thanks to Extended Play Sessions for having us, man. You guys have a good time tonight. Thank you all for coming out. This is so much fun. Isn't this a cool thing that they do here? It's crazy. Song called Anything You Want to Be.
so much, everybody. Thanks to Extended Play Sessions for having us for Lost Leaders. We'll see you over there, man. Come home and say hi.